Hi, I'm Tom Costantino with the Garden State Wine Growers Association. Today we're in Winslow Township, New Jersey, visiting with the Sharrett family at Sharrett Winery for another edition of the At The Vineyard Show. We're here with another edition of the At The Vineyard Show here at beautiful Sharrett Winery in uh, Winslow Township, New Jersey, outside of Hamilton, right in basically, what is it, Blue Anchor, Hamilton? Right, basically we're in Blue right Anchor, in the middle. right, and just outside of Hamilton. Yeah, and I'm with Larry Sh Sharrett Sr., Larry Sh Sharrett Jr., and uh, gentlemen, good to be here. Good to be with you, Tom. And uh, two men that uh, probably uh, 20 years ago never thought you'd be sitting in a vineyard. Nope. <laughs> never, <laughs> never thought we'd be farmers or winemakers. Yeah, both, both from divergent backgrounds, and how did it all come together? Um, Larry and I were making beer and wine together at home. Um, I was looking to retire, and, but I knew I couldn't retire to nothing. And while we were making beer and wine at home, we enjoyed making wine more than beer. Started taking courses, ended up in a seminar on starting a small winery. He decided it was time for a career change for him. Two of us sat at this seminar, looked at each other and said, this could be a really interesting business. So we wrote a full-blown business plan and lo and behold, 15 years later, here we are. Here you are, <laughs> you know, winning medals all over the country. Yep. yep. Now, it, this is a beautiful facility. It's, it, you know, the vineyard here, it's a beautiful, it's, it's a quiet morning as, as we're, uh, you know, doing the show, but uh, you've actually embraced this whole region, you know, and, and, and have become one of the standout wineries on, on the East Coast. But also, the fact is that, you know, here at Sharon Winery, you've made it an experience for your patrons. You know, it's more than just a tasting room. You know, you have so much going on here, especially on the weekends with all your live musical entertainment. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, from the very beginning, we, you know, we knew that we had to be more than just a place where people could come and, uh, you know, get a glass of wine and buy a few bottles. Um, we always wanted this to be more of a destination. Uh, you know, in the wine industry, you know, so so from the very beginning, we set out um, to, to really be a hospitality business as much as uh, you know a thriving um, farm and uh, winery. You know, so for us, you know, making quality wine was always number one, but number two was always the customer experience and make sure when people come here, you know, they have an experience, um, you know, that's that's fun, entertaining, um, and also educational because we want people to know about our wines. We want people to understand. Um, kind of our regional character. But here at Sharrett Winery, you've used all facets of the property. Uh, you do tours, you have your, your musical entertainment, even do dinners and things in, in your barrel room. That's right. We, we have a, a variety of experiences that we try to bring to the customers. So the barrel room, which is our separate barrel house, uh, we will take that over and use it for an experience. Uh, if you've ever seen the really beautiful barrel rooms in France, they're backlit and that, well, we tried to recreate that here. And so we'll use that for an experience of a sit down tasting or a dinner. Uh, in the fall, I always do tours of the vineyard. And in those tours, we actually go out and taste the grapes and then taste wines made right from that grape. That grape. So they get to experience the transition of fruit right into wine. And then the live music is up here on our patio Every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, we have great musicians that come in and do a musical experience that people can really enjoy. As they're drinking and enjoying your wines. Absolutely. And, and do you find that with the consumer, um, you know, they're looking for that, you know, they want, they want to know. Uh, I found this in talking to, to other winery owners that more and more the public wants to know what's going into this bottle of wine, how it's made, you know, the whole farm to table uh, aspect of, of things. You know, people want to know, they want to know their product is local, where it's coming from. Do you find that in your tasting room and the people that are coming here? Oh, oh definitely. I mean, this is um, something that from the very beginning, uh, we were always, always wanted to portray within our winery. Uh, we wanted people to understand kind of where things come from. And I think people over you know the last 20 years with all these different things that have gone on with kind of the food supply within the United States, um, kind of going back to the farm 
has become very important and people want to see you know what's happening in their farms they want to understand where their food comes from you know so from the very beginning we said you know we need to have the full experience right we need to have the vineyard right there on site so people can see it and understand what's happening in the vineyard uh, we wanted people to see our tanks and our barrel rooms you know so that they can actually see the product being made um, and when we do our tours we, we try to we try to do that we try to show them you know here's the vineyard here's where it all starts here's how we how we grow our grapes um, and then we move through the entire process and show them all the way through until we actually have wine in a, in a bottle. What's, what's the biggest question people always ask you when they're here? Is there a challenging question that you get all the time? Challenging question. Challenging question. Um, I, one of the questions that people always ask is, do we use additives in our wine? Hmm. And we are very low <laughs> input winemakers. It's grape, it's yeast, and I always tease and say we add a little dirt, right, all right, because right. there is a clay that we will use. But that's really it. It's a very natural product. And so that's probably the, the question they question. get to ask more than others. Now, when, when you we talked about how you came out of other careers and you, and you formed the winery, how did you come out to divide and conquer the duties here in running, <laughs> in running Sharon Winery? Well, first thing is we both went back to school. Mm -hmm. So we learned winemaking at the University of California at Davis, and then we took an opportunity to fly to France and study in Bordeaux. Um, so we both were, are very well grounded in the science and understand winemaking. Um, at the beginning, Larry was working part-time, and I was here more full-time, so I did more of the winemaking at the beginning. Now he does most of the winemaking, and I actually enjoy more of the customer interaction. Mm -hmm. I like doing the tours. I always like to talk to people. <laughs> well, so, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna be the front man, you have to have that kind of relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. But we both enjoy the science. We both enjoy the art. What goes into making what that goes into making wine. that wine? Now yeah. let's talk about your wines because um, you have done. You've been one of the wineries in New Jersey that have really, on a consistent basis, done very well in international and national co wine competitions. Uh, we're looking here at some of your wines. You run Oak Chardonnays, won gold medals in competitions. So has your Cabernet Franc. And then your Wicked Port Style Wine won double gold in the San Francisco Wine Chronicle competition. Also the New Jersey Wine Competition won the, the Governor's Cup. But what does it mean for you know one of these wines when it wins that kind of a medal in a national competition? Yeah, I mean, for us, what we're always, we've always said from the very beginning was our wines had to be world-class quality. You know, we, we never wanted to produce a wine that was a good wine for New Jersey, per se. Um, so that was always our goal from the very beginning was, was how do we, you know, what do we have to do in New Jersey in order to produce wines that are going to compete uh, nationally and internationally? Um, you know, we wanted people to come in here and, and taste our wines and, and understand, you know, what our goals were, how we wanted to get there. You know, so for us, we enter wine competitions for, for a couple of reasons. Um, we, we actually enter them so that we get some feedback, right? We want to understand, you know, how do our wines stand up to some of these other ones? You know, are we, are we producing what we think we're producing? Um, you know, that's number one. Um, the second thing that we always want to do is um, we want to show other people that once, you know, these wines are tasted and they're tasted in the blind at these competitions so that, that these judges don't know what they're drinking, um, they just know perhaps that they're drinking a Cabernet Sauvignon or a Chardonnay. Um, once they taste those wines and they're comparing against standards from the rest of the world, you know, they could be comparing against French wines, California wines, um, that these wines still hold up. And, you know, we're winning gold medals, double gold medals, and even best in class. Um, and a best in class award um, is really an award that we're kind of shooting for because that means after they've tasted all of the wines in the competition, um, they go back and they taste all of the double gold winners and they decide which wine was actually the best. The best. And right. we've, we've won many of those. As and well. these medals are validation pretty much of, of what you're doing here, but also validation on the quality. Um, this year, when we won double gold for Wicked at the San Francisco Chronicle, everybody was really excited about it. What I got excited about was I submitted 12 wines and I took a medal for each every one. one. It's fantastic. So that was really a clear indication that we are making wines that are as good as anything in the country. You know, and that's that's really the, the real validation. That's where New Jersey has to be as far as, you know, the rest of the country realizing, oh, it's East Coast, 
they don't make wine there. But when you can win double gold and when an unoaked Chardonnay can win, you know, a gold medal in one of these competitions, it validates not only what you're doing as winemakers, but what's happening here in the state. The wine regions now on the East Coast are really coming up, and there's no reason why New Jersey can't get that same reputation. Virginia has now got a great reputation. The Finger Lakes, Long Island, New Jersey can do it too. Right. I mean, we're making great product. Right. Yeah, for a very long time, you know, the French pretty much convinced the world that you can only make good wines in France. And then California pretty much showed the world that that wasn't true, that you know, there are other places you can make great wines. And then all these other new world wines started popping up all over, all over the world, really. Um, and I think everybody then realized, you know, wines can be made great, great wines can be made almost anywhere um, if you've got the right climate. Well, it turns out New Jersey is actually very similar to, to, Bordeaux. to Bordeaux, you know. So we're kind of in a sweet spot between Virginia and New York, um, which we know can make great wines in both those regions. Um, you know, so we're, we're starting to show that here in New Jersey, we can make great Bordeaux style wines um, and, and many other style wines as well. Yeah. Plus, you don't forget that the fact of what your customer base also wants. You make you make great white wines, great red wines. You also we, make a good sweet wine. We make great sangrias. And sangrias and your tango and, love. and everything else. People still love it. Um, how many acres now do you have currently planted? Uh, we have eight acres on this property right now, but we have uh, 34 acres total. So we're, we've been slowly expanding every year. Is there anything that you're looking ahead to, to you know, something new that you may want to get you know, plant? <laughs> we're, we're, we're in Without discussion. Without tipping your hand. <laughs> <laughs> we're in discussion right now about uh, adding a different variety. We're not sure what we're going to do, but uh, probably add something in the dry white area. Yeah, like, like, like many other the winemakers will tell you, you know, in New Jersey, um, when you have a region that hasn't been fully defined because we've only been growing here for, you know, I guess ser seriously growing, uh, dry wines, um, you know, for a few Since decades. Since the early 80s, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the wines that grow well here aren't fully defined, you know, so uh, we're kind of pioneers at this point. We, we need to um, keep trying new things, plant different varieties um, that we know work in regions that are similar to ours and see how they work. And some things work really well and other things don't. It's, 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 it's really interesting because you'll look at a climate that is very, very similar to ours, and you think you have very similar soils, and you, you think all the variables are the same, and you put that vine in the ground, totally and different. it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. work out. Um, but then on the flip side, there are other varieties that you plant, like uh, Cabernet Franc is a great example, um, you know, that we grow. And that's probably what you could say is one of the signature grapes. Absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely becoming one of the signature grapes in New Jersey. You know, so we, we've planted that, and it's it's actually gone beyond what we ex our expectations. It's it's become a, a wonderful grape for New Jersey, and um, its varietal character. Um, we've we've actually tasted our Cabernet Francs um, against good examples from California and good examples from France, um, and we actually I think again are kind of in the sweet spot because the the, the California wines when you taste them are, are like overly ripe. They're jammy. Um, they're kind of a little overdone. Mm -hmm. um, the French wines are, are a little on the, the vegetal side, you know, and of course people like both of those types, right, right. but we're kind of right in the middle, right? We've got a little bit of that, you know, fruit character that people really like, but then we also have a little bit of that vegetal character that can add some complexity. Yeah. And you hit your sweet spot. Yep, yeah, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I want to thank a couple of trailblazers here in South Jersey, <laughs> the Sharrets, Larry Jr., Larry Sr., and continued success. And we'll keep watching you as you trailblaze through and uh, help, you know, usher in a new era for New Jersey wine. Terrific. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I want to thank you, the audience, for joining us again for another edition of At the Vineyard. Remember, become a New Jersey wine ambassador. Drink New Jersey wine. Bring it home, serve it to your friends, bring it as uh, when you're a guest at someone's home, and then come out and visit us at the vineyard.